we call it the uh, green uh, belt of Krakow, that they are placed uh, where the city walls used to stand in the past. Uh, so we are going to see also the mi main market score and there we will spend some more time as I would like to explain why it looks like this, how it was developing through the centuries and why it's one of the most important market scores in Europe. Uh, then we will also visit uh, the, uh, one of the oldest universities in whole Europe also, as he said. Dear gentlemen, the building similar to this one somewhere. And if yes, where? <laughs> where? Warsaw. Yeah, that's a very good answer. The thing that things or all the delegations going to the castle were entering the, um, the city. So you can feel like Polish kings now. <laughs> that's it. Sorry? So when Ashkrakov used to be in the Middle Ages, uh, people started to settle here first. But Okay, so here you can see the poster with, uh, uh, with the painting uh, Ermin, or in Italian Ermelino. And of course, as uh, every uh, painting of... Uh, Trumpets and the arm of the guy playing. Okay? Um, please pay attention to what. 
one thing, uh, the melody will be interrupted at some point. Okay, he will be playing, 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 and it's like it, and he stops. Okay, I will tell you the legend about this later. So now, uh, yeah, you open the window now. I'm telling you, I'm 
First of all, um, the official part, so welcome, welcome to the famous Macabre, right? My name is Karen, it's my honor and pleasure to be a guide today. And you see, if you've come here, most likely you've been to one of our tours, right? Like the Old Town Tour or the Jewish Tour, basically one of the others, which we do here in the Foundation, we have a lot of them. So this Thank you. 
wooden part for arms it was operated with Thank 
Right, that's that's the one right there up there. So at the beginning, please let me a few words about the foundation itself. Right, first of all, uh, it was established in 2007, so nine years ago almost. Right, um, and back then, back then we were here in Poland and in Krakow, obviously as well. First bunch of people who decided to create something like free walks, to create something like free walking tours. But you see nowadays especially in the area of the main markets where you can find plenty, right? Absolutely plenty of companies like that. Uh, this place was established as a separate city, right? As a separate city, competitive city somehow to Krakow, right? Just close to Krakow, but separate one. It was established in 1335 by King Kazimierz the Great, by the way, the very same king who established Jagiellonian University. And you see also this, uh, this city from the very beginning, it was surrounded by uh, city walls, right? You can see remains of the city walls right there, right? But also four gates 
and wall towers. And you see, also from the very beginning, um, the Jewish people were here. Jewish people lived here because you see, um, Jewish settlers, Jewish people, they came to Poland uh, in, uh, in 10, 11, 12th century. They came here basically as, as traders and vendors, as merchants. And why they came here? Well, you see, somehow in Middle Ages, thinking about different religion here was slightly different comparing to Western uh, Europe, right? This tolerance here was a little bit higher. And why it was like that? Because first of all, you see, our rulers, Polish rulers, decided not to participate in crusades, right? And it was really important because, you see, always during crusades, when crusaders... Uh Another synagogue this time, the synagogue was called the Small Synagogue of Popper Synagogue. Did that one was built in 17th century, exactly 1620. And you see exactly so new settlements, new synagogues here, right? Um, I, I probably do the same thing. Uh, I and then so many, so many, uh, so many, 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 so Really in bad condition. So, like I told you, they, they they found here a lot of a lot of flats like that, really cheap ones. And also, you see artists came here, especially especially on um, on Sunday, because then then that uh, so we can find here something like a. Um, Uh, suitcases from balconies after you can find you are trying also um, um, uh, liquid Only here. 
You see, very significant here, um, we can find here these tops of this, of this, of this, uh, of this wall, right? Uh, you see, for example, if you go to um, uh, Jewish graveyards from 19th or 20th century, you will find Jewish tombstones. And they, they basically, they look exactly like that. For example, if you go to this graveyard just behind um, uh, Rama synagogue, you will find tombstones like that. So you see, obviously the first impression, the first thought of people close in the Jewish ghetto was obvious. That's our grave. Right? We'll Okay, so finally we are in front of um, the Schindler's factory, or maybe we can say that we are below Schindler's factory because this building here, uh, that's um, management administrative, administrative part of Schindler's factory right here, you can find this um, gate of Schindler's factory. Before I tell you more about the factory itself, I have to tell you something about uh, Oskar Schindler himself, right? You see, Oskar Schindler, he was born in 1908 in Tvitao, nowadays it's Czech Republic. And you see, in 1938, Oskar Schindler, first of all, joined NSDAP, so National Socialist German Workers' Party, so-called Nazi Party, ruled by Adolf Hitler. And also in the very same year, um, Oskar Schindler be, became a member of ABWE. Right, Abwehr was German military uh, intelligence organization. So basically, Oskar Schindler became Nazi spy. And as a Nazi spy, in the very same year, he was arrested in Czechoslovakia and sent to prison. And you see, then at the beginning of 1939, when Nazi Germany took control over Czechoslovakia, he was released from prison as political prisoner. Right? Then in 1939, September, here we have outbreak of the Second World War. And um, when, when um, this part, western part of Poland, was occupied by Nazis, then first, obviously, um, Nazis came here. Some of them, they came as, uh, as soldiers, as officials. Um, but some of them, they came here to run businesses. And some of them, they came here as trustees, right? Trustee Treuhander was, was, was uh, someone who basically you know, controlled people's property. That's why you see when Oskar Schindler, when he came here at the very beginning, he took control over one Jewish shop in Krakowska Street um, in, the, in the area of Christian part of Kazimierz. And second, second target, basically, um, the place to make money was this place, right? This place, this factory was pretty cheap because you see this factory became bankrupt even before the Second World War in June 1949. 
And you see at the beginning, Oskar Schindler here hired uh, Poles as well, right? But pretty short, uh, pretty quick, he realized it would be even, even um, cheaper if he hires Jewish people because, like I've told you, they were not paid at all. And, um, but also we have to say that first of all, the conditions of working here, they were much, much better than every, any other um, uh, factory here. Also you see, well, Oskar Schindler was somehow, somehow very uh, practical man, right? Very practical man, he, 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 um, he didn't have any prejudice against Jews, against Poles. He didn't, he didn't come here basically to hate people, to kill people, he came here to make money right that was that was the case but also you see in 1943 when the Jewish ghetto was liquidated in March 1943 and when people from 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 um, from ghetto a they were uh, moved to Poshov labor camp also here in this in this factory right there you can find this black building behind the gate and uh, these buildings were uh, production halls. Behind these production halls, right here, Oskar Schindler established something like branch of Poshov um, um, uh, Labor Camp only for employees of this factory, right? And in 1944, when basically you no know, Soviet armies, when the Red Army was pretty close, then Oskar Schindler decided to evacuate this factory, to evacuate these people as well. And you see, okay, so evacuating the factory, machines, so on and so forth, it was, it was pretty obvious, he owned these things. But uh, employees, these people working here, like I've told you, this, this, this um, camp here was a branch of Poshov Labor Camp. And as his commander of Poshov Labor Camp was Amon Gad. So obviously Amon Gad said, no way, they stay here. Then Oskar Schindler bribed Gad and finally got his approval then then the list was created. Then Schindler's list was created. 1,094 names. And this part most likely you know from the movie, right? But have you ever heard about the book, Schindler's Ark? Because you see the movie, the scenario of the movie was created based on a book. And this book was written by Australian novelist Thomas Kenley and published in um, 1982. But you see, interesting thing is how Thomas Kenley, this writer, got this story. And now it comes another story about another character, another man, Leopold Pfefferberg. He was, he was um, a Polish Jew, he fought um, against, um, against Wehrmacht in September 1939 in Polish army. But because he was Jewish, obviously he was close in Jewish ghetto, he became employee of Oskar Schindler and he was saved by the list. And you see, after the Second World War, first of all, he, he moved to the US, he changed his name from Leopold Pfefferberg to Paul Deck Page. That's why we can find this person, this character in the movie. He's one of employees, employees of Schindler, he's called Paul Deck. Exactly. And you see, he moved right there also, he became friend of Oskar Schindler, and he had one purpose. He wanted to, to, to make Schindler remember. Said many times, you know, something like, Schindler gave me life, so I want to give him immortality. But you see, for many, many, many years, nobody, absolutely nobody was interested in this story. But finally, Paul Deck Page, also known as Leopold Feverberg, met Thomas Kennelly, and then Thomas Kennelly wrote this book. But you see, it's only the book. So Kennelly basically changed a lot of things, right? Ch changed, changed the plot, um, um, uh, combined, melted somehow these characters. For example, I see if you remember uh, Helen, maiden of Amon Geth, right, in fact, two people, Helen Hirsch and Helen Rosenzweig. If you remember, also one of the main characters, uh, Isaac Stern, who prepared the list, right? In fact, the list was prepared, obviously, by somebody uh, somebody else, and, and Stern in the movie is, again, is combined from, from, from three different characters, Stern, Pemper, and Banker. So, you see, sometimes we, we know that, you know, the book and the movie is one thing, because of history we know more, right? And also, you know, somehow, um, you know, speaking about uh, Schindler, right? Exactly, we know more. We remember that, that Schindler was, was, was Nazi party member. He was Nazi spy. He came here to make huge money um, uh, on tragedy of, 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 of people's life. He escaped to Argentina after the Second World War, like many Nazis did, and for many, many years, he took money from people saved by him. Okay, we know all of that, right? He was really complicated character. Also, he had really complicated private life. But you see, at the end of the day, we must remember about something else. 
right, right here on your on your left hand side, right there, you can find um, uh, entrance to um, to the museum, right, to, to this exhibition. And on your left hand side, from the entrance, you will find a plate right there. And now on this plate, there's a sentence from Yad Vashem medal. Um, Righteous Among the Nation, because obviously after the Second World War, Oskar Schindler was awarded with Righteous Among the Nation title. And right there you will find, whoever saves one life, saves the world entire. Right? So we know that this man was really complicated, right? It's not so easy story. But we must remember that 1,094 times this world was saved by this man. And also speaking about citizens of this particular city, like I told you, you see, maybe, maybe 10,000 survived Holocaust here in this city, maybe a few thousand. And more than 1,000 survived because of the list, because of this man. We must remember about it. Ladies and gentlemen, our tour came to the end. First of all, uh, first of all I have a gift for you. These maps you have...
I know.
4 p.m. Non proviamo a tastierina? Ok. Se dovesse, allora in certi punti il basso.
Thank you.